And you mentioned burnout before, right? This is something that my clients are dealing with all the time. And all of us have faced at one point or another where we felt burned out. And so, uh, yeah, part of, of helping that situation is what you described, building the culture so that we have some flexibility that allows us to deal with life and to deal with business. But I always say, at the end of the day, it's a lot about results, right? We have to do That's right. We have and to you have to, Yeah, you have to celebrate those results exactly. too. I think that I'm a big believer in let's celebrate our milestones. And yeah. certainly at a, a startup or a large organization, you have milestones, celebrate together. Make that a, um, you know, we're, we're rowing in the same direction. We're living, to, or, you know, we win together, we lose together. And it becomes um, a, even a stronger team, I think, if you can really get that across and live it and be honest about it. And so how would you say, because you've been on both sides of the spectrum, you've been with a startup and you're, you're been with a big company, right? That's right. So how do you continue to cultivate that type of culture when you, when you're much larger, right? Because yeah. you've been in, on both ends. That's basically. right. Well, at Pershing, it was quite easy. They, they do a good job of really celebrating. Um, they have great ways, even at their, um, you know, regional offices, they do. What are some of the ways? Oh, so um, family uh, picnics in the summer mm -hmm. and dunk tanks and all that kind of thing over the summer. They have, of course, holiday parties and their holiday parties have their own um, at each region, kind of the, their own flair, but um, something that is celebrated. People get up in front and talk about why why we were celebrating what we were celebrating. Yeah. Or if we weren't celebrating, if we weren't having a great year, we were honest about that. Same thing at InvestNet. It was a very similar um, culture where we were just, the communication of it was honest and open. Now that we're here, it doesn't always have to be parties. It can also be just being um, uh, appreciation. You know, I, I find time in my week every week to appreciate people who I believe went above and beyond. And I think that goes a very long way, especially when you're at the top. So what do you think of the leadership, um, I guess, the leadership styles that believe that they get paid to do the job? So why should I show appreciation? Oh, I'm playing I, devil's advocate, no, obviously. I, <laughs> I don't have any response to that. I can't imagine <laughs> being that way. <laughs> I, you know, I, I really believe in teamwork. I believe in, uh, you know, I do believe in thanking people. I, I, I know it goes a long way. And having been in the, you know, I know when I was young, having someone, you know, at least from even a peer say, hey, thank you for that. Or you did a great job today. Yeah. No one, no one shuns that. Yeah. Uh, and don't, the one thing I would uh, just caution is don't, is be authentic about it. Don't just throw it out there. If someone didn't do a great job, don't tell them they did. Be, <laughs> um, be honest and say, you know, right. here are the things I liked, but here are some things I think you could work on. Um, so I think that if they know it's coming from the heart and it's honest, yeah. it really goes a much further way. So Lori, what, what are, haven't we talked about? Because there are some situations that are pretty difficult. What in your experience has been one of those situations that are difficult just dealing with uh, trying to develop that culture or you know, potentially difficult employees or, or leaders who we need to take um, you know, measures that sometimes don't seem, that, that are unpopular? Well, we are living in an age where things change so fast. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've learned, I think a little bit the hard way, is that when, because things are moving so fast, and as a leader, you have to think about change and being a change agent from the top frequently. Um, what I think people need to be careful of and what I have found difficult is when you talk about change, it's important to understand that the people who've been there a while may have a lot of um, pride in what they have built and what you're talking about changing. Mm -hmm. And so if you go in and say, okay, we got to change this and don't explain why or how, or that, that it wasn't that everything they have is wrong, then that 
you know, people get more grounded and don't want to change when right. they feel like you're not acknowledging what they built and why they built it the way they did. I like that point. Yes. So it's and important. I, I like that point because you're right. I mean, part of part of what we do every day is bring, a lot of us bring our best to work. And when someone comes in and says, we're changing it all, it is yes. no good. It's like throwing away years and years and years of your work. Right. So I so appreciate you making that comment because it is about acknowledging mm -hmm. that we've gotten this far. Right. The people who have taken us this far and that it's time to continue to evolve, which is a different story. Right. That's right. And so, I think, that, oh, go ahead. No. So, so, so it's not about throwing away the baby with the bathwater. Right. Right. It's about right. saying this is a great place from which to take off from. That's right. That's exactly right. And I do think that more and more leaders are facing this because when you look at the way things have changed, the kind of the new way of doing things is bringing in people even from outside the industry at the top because we're trying to get new ways of thinking about things. And so many leaders do go in and say, okay, we're changing everything. Everything's, you know, and not only do people feel vulnerable already because they don't have a relationship with that new leader, but they also feel like, oh, I can't even defend what we had and why we did it this way. Yes. So I, I have, I will admit, I've learned the hard way on that as well. Um, but I share it with others so that they don't go through that, hopefully. Yes. Well, thank you so much for sharing your insights. And I think that you have shared with us um, celebrating as being one way to really keeping uh, the team moving forward, uh, hiring the right people. And That's I know right. we didn't talk about this, but once you hire the right people, how do you keep them motivated? And I think part of that is to acknowledge them. That's that right. What they're doing is appreciated. Uh, right. Finding those, those moments to uh, create kind of a community within, yeah. within work. And to, you know, to your point, we spend most of our times with each other. That's right. We spend more time with, with our coworkers than we do with our own family, technically, uh, exactly. at least on a daily basis when it comes to Monday through Friday. So uh, is there anything else you want to you wanna share with us before we say goodbye and uh, you know, close this episode? Well, I would just share one of my favorite quotes um, that is by an unknown author, but I, one of my favorite quotes, um, I would share that. So it's, um, a bird sitting on a tree is never afraid of the branch breaking because her trust is not on the branch, but on its own wings. And from my perspective, that gives me confidence, not on just the organization you're with and the team you're building, but in yourself. And if everyone feels that way, I think it builds a better, stronger organization and confidence that you can do it, um, whether or not everything else around you is working well or not. I couldn't have said it better myself. And that's the reason why with Fearless Women at Work, that's exactly what I strive to do is to help leaders develop so that they have self-leadership. As I, I know, as as it's called, and also a part of what's really important to me is to, and I noticed just watching you how you're able to bring the fun and the lightheartedness to things and the excitement that you have, which means to me that you have passion for what you're doing with Advisor Innovation Labs, and. I think it requires for us leaders, men and women, this is not about gender, to integrate both mm -hmm. sides of us, the attributes that are hard driving, demanding, pushing, get it done with the compassion, the collaboration, the nurturing, right? That's right. The showing people that we really care because at the end of the day, we could be the biggest innovators, but right. it's all about people. Oh, absolutely. We are problem solvers. I 100% agree with you. <laughs> we, can, we can program computers to do whatever we want them to do, right. create any type of networks that we want, but at the end of the day, it is us humans who are the problem solvers. I 100% agree with that, and um, it's a lot of why I do what I do. That's you know, right. I love the relationships. I love the human aspect of advice, and I think it's important. So That's great, Lori. So how would people reach you? Uh, I can be reached either by email or phone. Okay. Uh, my cell phone is 773-677-8003. And my email is lori at advisor innovation labs with an S dot com. 
Great. Thank you so much, Lori. And you can reach me, Dr. Jeannie Barrow, at fearlesswomenatwork.com. And by the way, I don't know if, I, if you, you probably know, my um, number one best-selling book was published this October. And yes. you made it to the Amazon number one, which is, yeah. Oh, my yeah. God, that's fantastic. So, yeah, very, you know, celebrating that this month, for sure. Oh, you should celebrate that for a couple months, my friend. <laughs> yeah, at least for the rest of the year, right? Well, congratulations <laughs> well, on that. That's thank you very so well Lori. It was great having you, and I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Yes, thank you, Dr. Barra. I appreciate and thank it. you, everyone, for joining us today. We'll be in touch. All right, bye-bye.